Hi and welcome to another episode of Fair FC and Vanilla FM. And today we are going to play the playoffs. If you saw the last episode, uh, we had a very, very short episode just to play the last match of the season. And that match allowed us the opportunity to um, play for the last playoff position. So we were... Um, essentially, so if I go through the season, so we started the season pretty low. In the um, in the relegation zone, and then as time went on, we started to climb up the table slowly. And then, in the, by the last match of the league, we were seventh, tied for points with Colchester, who were sixth. Um, and we were actually playing our last match of the year with Colchester, so we needed to win the match in order to get that last playoff place. So we did that. We ended up, uh, ended up winning the match at home. Was it at home? No, it was it was away. He was in Colchester. Uh, we won the match by 2-0. With two goals from Richard... What's his name? R Richard Cross, who's um, one of our 18-year-olds from our N18 team. So he's not even a senior player. We're now playing the first leg of the first playoff against Stockport. There's two legs to this, one today at home and in a couple of uh, days time in Stockport. And the way that I'm going to cut this episode is that I'm going to go through the matches as quickly as I can, however many matches we end up playing. It could be four, it could be three, uh, no, could it be four? I'm not sure. So we have two games for this, for this playoff and then we have, I think, either one more or two more matches. For the next playoff but yeah we'll go through the matches and I'll cut all the breaks in between so I'll just cut between the matches to try and condense it all to one episode we'll see how that goes so at the moment we are winning with a goal from our midfielder Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do that and then play the second half and see how it goes. There's a chance here from Richard Cross into the middle. And another goal from Ismail again. That's a pretty, pretty nice play as well. Cross kind of prepping the way up the line as well with several passes as he came up from different players. Nice play. Looks like Clifford's gonna have to come off. He must have picked up some sort of knock from somewhere. He's not playing particularly well either, so let's do that. Um, I think him for now and then we'll save the last three subs for the end. saved. Good job. I thought there was a goal for a moment. Okay, last three subs, so let's have... Uh, need some changes in defense. 
with him and him and then finally we're gonna have I think this guy let's let's start this guy he's a brand new youth fire um literally just came through our ranks now in, in the in the April intake so yeah fresh onto the pitch not sure you'll have time to do anything but it's either 15 or 16 year old Maltese player and there we are so we have a two goal advantage going into the next leg of the playoff so I'm gonna go straight into that uh, and I'll put a cut in here and I'll see you in just a bit all right and I'm back for the second leg against Salford I had to make some changes because of injuries and tiredness and so on but um, yeah nothing much so I went and checked Stockport's final position in the league so they finished fourth one position above us um, yeah we're playing Richard Cross from the start as well because of again trying to manage the squad and rotate due to that is a fantastic way to begin sorry I was saying Richard Cross uh, one of our under 18s is playing from the start um, also I should say apologies for the lights that are showing I, I get this bug a lot actually um, I don't know if anyone else has this issue when they're running the game where all of a sudden the lights just appear on the screen and it's like these white spots everywhere very distracting but yeah that's a fantastic way to start the game another goal from uh, a midfielder it's, it's good it means that the rotation of the squad is kind of not compromised things of course we have to remember that Stockport are playing at home so they're not gonna be easy to beat even though we are 3 nil, nil up they can't, they're not gonna get us, let us get away with it too easily. They're gonna try and score, try and create lots of problems for us. Um, anyway, so regarding the lights, um, which I presume is some sort of rendering bug, um, I don't know if that is specific, because I'm running the game on a MacBook, uh, an M1 silicon macbook um i don't know if that's specific to that or if people in other uh like say for example windows machines or intel based machines have the same problem so let me know if there's something that you recognize happening to you as well and then of course next year we've been told that FM is going to be built using the Unreal Engine so both for the match engine but apparently also for the rest of the UI it's going to use Unreal Engine as well so it will be interesting to see how much the experience will change because I'm presuming the UI is going to change a lot And, and doing things using Unreal Engine uh, will give I think will give them the opportunity to create some really interesting ways of interacting with the match as well so we'll can't wait to see what that's going to look like maybe we'll see it from the manager's perspective rather than from a TV camera perspective I know that would be a limitation but we'll make it more realistic if you think about it and you know, we know that FM is all about making it as realistic as possible. 
so that might be one of the changes we'll see okay two more serves who do I take out who do I take out um, I can take this guy out for Ryan Hansen um, and I could do that too actually no I'm gonna take Oscar and I'm gonna swap things around a little bit okay I think that I don't have any more subs right no that's a really nice block So far we managed to get away without conceding goals. I don't want to say that too soon. Because the game is notorious for late goal from the AI. And there, blocking the ball away, tapping it away. Okay, that was. What is it? Corner. Okay, fair enough. What did I say? I literally said that a few seconds ago. The game is notorious for last minute AI goals. I don't know why it's so programmed to do that, but um, I think it does it more often than real life. But anyway, I'm not going to complain. Not going to complain. I complain about that all the time. Right. So we are through to the next playoff. I am not going to spend too much time commenting now. I'm going to cut straight to it. So I'll see you in a little bit. And we're back for the. Uh, playoff final a little bit of um, tweaking around with players and tactics and so on but not nothing much essentially just putting back some of the players that are rested in the previous um, match and also a couple of injuries to account for as well uh, Richard Cross having to play for the senior squad so we can keep an eye on this maximum of five lone players in the match squad but other than that no, not not much changed for the final. We are playing at Wembley. It's only a one match, playing in a neutral ground. A lot of Hereford supporters. All of that is Hereford supporters, as far as I can see. It's good. These are Reading supporters. I think it starts there. So we probably have, for example, the south side or something like that of the stadium. I bet Reading will have the majority of the stadium allocated to them, but ours seems to be a bit more compact, a bit more densely, um, densely ticketed, a lot more people in the seats, nearly sold out. So yeah, so here we go, Wembley, it will be the first time at Wembley for a lot of these guys, so they'll be quite nervous, I think. And Cross, here he goes. Richard Cross, the under 18s, saying, you know what, I've come to Wembley, I've come to score a goal. Good for him. So if I'm um, just mentioning as well, obviously, Richard Cross being a Nugent from the Hereford Academy, he 
If you want to support the channel, you can head up to Patreon where you can leave your name uh, or a nickname or something and I will all allocate one of those nicknames to a new gym player either in the senior squad or in the youth squad and for as long as you support the channel we will follow the life of that new gym in every episode just to see how they're progressing even if they leave the club we'll still follow them as long as you're supporting the channel so we are at Wembley 1-0 with the goal coming from an under 18s player fantastic half time I'm gonna get Farrux out because he has, he's got a yellow card so make sure we don't go under and he's also not having a great match so said this before um, but if we go through this playoff and win uh, it will be the first time we get promoted without winning the title so so far we've won every single title of every single league we've been in Richard Cross is playing really well he's just done some really great moves up there just now. Uh, yeah, so it'll be the first time we get promoted without it being through the league win. Well, it looks like we have a red card. So I, I, got, I brought this guy in, right, to avoid Farouk's having a red card. And then he himself goes ahead and gets a red card. Ah, tut, tut, tut. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to get you out there, but we're going to keep you as a non nonsense centre back. And I'm going to get all that out, get George in, and I think that's it. Alright, final subs, with 20 minutes to go. Three more subs we can do, and I think we're going to get Cole uh, there's no one else I can put in for this guy which is unfortunate uh, we're actually going to get in Gaela not Roger and then oh actually if I do this and this that makes more sense okay cool where well, I go five subs That's annoying. Okay, it's going to be a VR check, but I think he was on side, to be fair. Oh, no, this allowed. Okay, I thought he was on side from, from the line. Okay, he's slightly further ahead. Fair enough. Well, good for us. Good for us. Of course, we don't have VR check, VAR checks normally in our... Um, in our league is only because this is at Wembley and Wembley has the facility for that and it's also a pretty important final it decides who gets promoted to the championship and the championship so it's so the structure if you're not familiar with the British st structure you probably are if you're watching this but um so it's got the premiership which is the first league and then the championship which is actually the second league and the league one which is the one we're playing at the moment which is actually the third league, so the names don't really match up in a lot, like in the way that if someone didn't have any kind of background knowledge about it, the names wouldn't make any sense. But it's just the way it is. 
and was that the young kid? 45? It was. No, it wasn't. Okay, you had the assist. So the young kid, number 45, Gaela, is actually like 15 or 16. He's, he's come straight from Hereford School. So I would have been super impressed if he'd, sc if he'd scored a goal. But he did the assist. He did the assist, and you know, assisting a goal at Wembley is, is big stuff. Yeah, so we are... If, if, if we manage to keep this win, which I think we might be able to, well, we'd be promoted to the championship, the Skybet Championship, which is the second league in... British football and another VAR check apparently it's loud again uh, yes yeah, so we'll be just one away from the top tier massive um, massive changes for the club now, a few things to think about. We don't have any money to invest on any proper players, so that will be a constraint. We have to rely on free transfers again and loans, but again, we'll have the same problem. If we rely too often on loans, or too many loans, I mean, we'll have the same problem we had this year, which um, is we'll have to manage how many of those loanies we can then play. Oh, the match has come to an end, and it was nerve-wracking. Because I truly thought we were going to lose this. But we won and we got promoted to the championship. Amazing. I don't think my voice actually portrays, like, conveys how excited this actually is. Exciting this actually is. Um, this is actually really amazing. Okay, right. Oh, we have a pretty decent budget. Like, it's the best we've had forever. 1.1 million which is pretty good and we've got a solidarity payment of 7,000 which will have helped um, oh, can I expand the stadium? I'm going to ask for it expand the stadium Let's ask for something let's spend the money <laughs> As soon as we get money, I want to uh, always think about spending it. Okay, let's release some of these loanies, because that saves us a little money, a little bit of money. We can't, okay. Let's see if there's any, like, awards or anything that we get to see. There we go. Review. Uh, these are all the players that came in. Ba, ba, ba. We had lots of revenue from broadcast, as you can see there. Uh, prize money from the FA Cup. J Row actually left halfway through the season. It's interesting. Um, so did Mackenzie Lemon. So did Kia de Flont. Okay. The youngest ever player, 15 years old and 269 days. No competition awards, but we got um, Ismail being the fan player of the season. Young player of the season was the goalkeeper Renato Bellucci. Also the signing of the season. Goal of the season by Max in the FA Cup against Millwall. Esmail with 16 goals. Most assists, Richard Rowe with 10. Most play of the match, 6 for Esmail. Also the average rating and Alistair Clifford with the most passes completed. And there we go. Finish. Alright. Well, this is very exciting. Uh, we have... Uh, a huge lot more <laughs> than I thought. I thought we have about 60,000. We have 387 now. We've gained this season 129,000 supporters because we're in the championship. So that is 
just so you have an idea, Hereford has 90,000 people in them. The, the population of Hereford is around about 90,000. So this is more than Hereford, uh, which is great. So we're now, our following is more than just local following, which is great. Um, yeah, we still have the majority of the stadium being taken up by supporters that um, really love us. So that's the yellow, the green, and the blue. So those are supporters that are behind us, whether or not we're having success. Um, the pinks and the oranges aren't very good. You don't want to have too much of those. Corpora is just like, they're just interested in facilities, really. They're not really interested in... It's like, they just want to make money out of us. Marketing and so on. I'll leave that. Actually, no, I'll do this. No. There isn't that much to do. Let's see if I can negotiate that. Suggest. Go on. Suggest. Okay. Uh, so we have to play defensive football. Oh, defensively solid football. D direct football with counter-attack. Making the most of set pieces. Work within the budget. That's normal. Expand the stadium. Nothing I can do about that. I'll do the meeting later because that always stresses me out. Uh, so I need to like have a proper think about it. Oh, it turns out I don't have to fire anyone. So the the f the board halfway through the season said at the end of the season you have to let go two coaches at every at, in every tier. Turns out I don't have to do that anymore. That's great. Okay, so this is it. We got promoted. I'm gonna go and um, essentially go through the summer, build a new squad. I might even come back and show you how I build a squad. I think I'm, I think I've done episodes on that before though, so I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'll come back and show you what the squad looks like and at the start of the next season. Thank you so much for watching until the end, and it's very exciting to be able to get promoted every consecutive year in this save much more enjoyable than previous versions of the game um yeah thanks so much for the support take care bye bye